On Monday evening at Coca-Cola headquarters, protesters staged a die-in outside in order to pressure the company to take a firm stance against the anti-voting legislation currently making its way through the Georgia State House. Joining me now to discuss it is Cliff Albright. He is co-founder of Black Voters Matter. And Cliff, thank you so much for joining us at this last second to discuss this important issue. How are you this morning, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is ours, and, and it is a sad morning here in the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia in general. Um, I, what I, what I want to talk about uh, first is the connection between the white supremacist violence that this city and the Asian community suffered last night and the all-out assault on voting rights. Um, I, I see the connection. A lot of people may not see it, but you were speaking about it. What do you think about how they overlap? Yeah, I mean, you, you hit it right on the nail. It's, it's that white supremacy. It's really two things, right? One is that fundamental belief in white supremacy. The same thing that believes that you can overturn the elections and steal votes is the same thing that makes you think you can steal lives, Asian American lives, right? It's based on that same white supremacy. And it's all based on a big lie, right? Two different big lies. One, the big election lie, right? That there's this fraud that's out there. But the other one is this, this big lie that like Asian Americans or Asians in general are to blame for, for COVID. It's all the same. It's all the same roots, right? It's very much, it's deeply embedded in, in even the, the founding of this country, right? It's the, yeah. the same thing that corrupted the, the founding, the constitution, the same yellow peril that they mm. talked about in the, in the 1800s is still with us today. So I'm glad you were speaking up about that. That, that issue about this Asian American violence because it's, it's been going on too long and it's been silent. Mm. In terms of what's happening on the on the voting uh, suppression legislation that's passing through, you guys have up, yep, you guys have stepped up the pressure because of the equivocating that's going on with these corporations. You reached out to Coca Cola, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Delta Airlines, and with the expectation that they would fight on behalf of voting rights as they have fought on behalf of other issues. What have you found to, to date in terms of their willingness to actually step out and defend voting rights with their political and economic capital? No, it's, it's been an epic fail on their part. You know, not, not only have they not stepped up, um, to defend the voting rights. They've done, not done anything to really go back on the donations that they've made, that they've previously made to the very Republican legislators that are pushing these bills. In the case of Coke, over $30,000, not to the party in general, to the very sponsors of these voter suppression bills. And so they, they're not just on the sideline, they're actually complicit, and they've not really responded well to the actions that we've taken. The die-in on Monday was actually the third day of direct action. We had two days of protests and demonstrations demonstrations at World of Coca-Cola over the weekend, and then we had to die in on Monday. And so we just got to continue to ramp up the pressure. Coca-Cola at first came out with a statement. Some of you may have seen it all on Twitter, right? That seemed like they were they were um, taking a more aggressive stance, but like literally within an hour, they backtracked from their own statements. They backtracked mm -hmm. from, a, from an article that was in the, in the Washington Post because Home Depot came out and said, oh, wait a minute, oh, hold up. We're with the chamber. And in the chamber statement, they don't take a strong stance. In fact, the chamber statement actually reinforces the big lie because they say we want to uh, an approach and legislation that deals with access as well as election security, right? As soon as you hear election security or as soon as you hear election integrity, guess what? That's voter suppression because mm. it assumes and accepts the framing of the big lie. It assumes that there's a problem with the security and a problem with um, the integrity. And so you can't play both sides on this. Salesforce right. actually came out with a better statement than any of the, the other companies. And so we're looking for companies like Salesforce to then take those statements and now show us some actions. But in the case of Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta, they've not yet even stepped up in terms of their words. And if they can't step up in terms of words, then they're a long way of getting where we need them to be in terms of action. And so they are still com not only complicit, but they're at this point almost co-conspirators because their dollars, their donation dollars have gone directly to these politicians that are forwarding and sponsoring this legislation. And yet, and yet they feel they I guess they're feeling pretty cavalier as if the black community who are disproportionately the targets of this legislation as if we don't have enough juice to actually put pressure on them. But they, they, they really they feeling kind of froggy here, aren't they? Yeah, clearly they, they feel like either one or two things. They, they feel like we're going to get tired of, of dealing with them. We just going to burn out. Newsflash, that ain't happening. Uh, or, they, or they just feel like we just don't have the we don't have the power. 
breaking news. Hmm. That ain't happening either, right? We've demonstrated that we've got the power that when we work together that we can win. We're just at the beginning stages. You know, I, I, I've been saying we're at phase three right now in terms of the direct direct action. We're about to take it to the Chamber of Commerce because they're 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 leading this this pack in terms of holding them together and not having them take any aggressive actions. So guess what? We're going to change target the chamber, and when we target the chamber, we're not just going to do it at the at the statewide chamber offices. We got folks all across the state, all across Southwest Georgia, Middle Georgia, and guess what? They got local chambers in their community. So the, mm. the next phase of, of our action is that no chamber in any of these counties where we got a strong black presence and where we got partner organizations, for none of them is it going to be business as usual. It will not be mm. business as usual. I want to shout out our partners at New Georgia Project. They got some, some great billboards that have gone up calling out these companies. So if you're in the metro Atlanta area, you know, go on and look for them. We're going to take these spe- expanding those billboards and taking those to the rest of the state. It will not be business as usual in this state until these companies step up. Uh, no chamber left behind. Um, let's uh, do me a favor and give the audience, just in case they may have forgotten the severity of this legislation. Can you give them a quick rundown of what's at stake? And then following up with that, what our next moves are collectively to push back against it? Yeah, this legislation, it literally attacks every form of voting. It attacks um, the vote by mail, absentee. It attacks early voting in terms of reducing the number of days, specifically attacking Sunday voting, which we know is, is a day where we do um, black black communities across the state do souls to the polls. Um, and it attacks same day voting. Right. At, at every level, there's an attack on the voting process. Um, one of the one of the things that they're talking about, possibly there was some discussion that they might take out because they feel like it's a lightning rod is this issue of attacking the no excuse um, um, vote by mail. And there was some discussion that, well, if we take that out, we might be able to slide it through. Even if they were to do that, there's literally a dozen of other provisions in this bill that are equally right. horrible. In fact, there's, there's one provision that I, if I could just mention, because not a lot of people are talking about it. And it's the provision that says that if there's an election and if there appears to be some irregularities in the local board of election, um, Um, uh, certifies, right, that the state can then take over the local board of election. Wow. So that that that, you know, if you go back to what happened in this this most recent election where you had people national and statewide that were trying to say, oh, there's fraud, there's fraud. But uh, county after county, the board of elections were saying, look, we we uh, administered this. We've checked it. There's no fraud. Right. If that if this bill had been in place for this most recent election, the state would have been able to come in overturn Mm. those results, get rid of those local election boards, change those results. So literally, even if everything else, if every other provision in these bills got squashed, that one provision would basically allow the state at any time to overturn any election. That might be the most dangerous provision in this bill. What's our next move, man? What's what what is um, I know you said we're at stage three. Uh, What happens when Mm -hmm. we get to DEFCON 4? DEFCON 4. They don't, they don't want DEFCON 4. Uh, you know, everything's on the table. You know, we like we said, stage three is where we're doing this direct action, where we're going to their businesses, where we're going to their offices. We've been making phone calls and all that and text messages. That's continuing the advertising. But when we get to the next phase, and that means we're going to have to ramp up the direct action, right? We're going to have to have an even more direct um, impact on, on all of these companies in their, in their businesses. Right now, we're actually looking at some of these legislators. We're looking at what, what's their personal business interests. Mm. We had uh, um, some of our partners in one of our counties, they um, went after the leading sponsor on the House side, the state House side, is this representative named Barry Fleming, old school voters presser. He also happened to be the county attorney in Hancock County, which is over 70 percent black. And so some of our partners there, the local organizers, they got together. They went to the county commission. They said, look, we can't have him as our county attorney if he's going to be the main sponsor of these voter suppression bills. And guess what? He done lost his job. Right. <laughs> so so we're, we're taking a close look at all of these representatives, any one of them that have any kind of business interests, any kind of county contracts, um, um, any kind of uh, other relationships, especially relationships with some of these corporate 500 companies, we're coming after them. And so we're ramping it up day by day, day by day, week by week. Uh, We're not gonna stop until we squash these bills. And we believe that there's movement going on right now. Got a lot of people nervous in, in, in the Georgia corporate community. So we're just gonna keep ramping it up. The other thing though, the other piece is this, There's also the federal piece to this, right? Because at the end of the day, if H.R. 1 and H.R. 4 had already been passed, we wouldn't even be having this discussion right now. 
because everything that George is trying to do would have been already illegal with HR one. We've got to end the filibuster now, Absolutely. not next month, not next year, not next week. We've got to end the filibuster now and get moving on these voting rights um, legislation that's pending in Congress right now. Cliff Albright, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Thank you so much for joining us at the last second. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Always a pleasure.